it's with great pleasure to, um, that I welcome you to the University of Dundee on behalf of Dura, the Dundee University Review of the Arts, and also um, in terms of writing practice and study, our publishing writing and our creative writing yeah. program here. And this is just to introduce um, everyone to Moira Forsyth, um, who is editorial director at Sandston. Now, Sandston Press is an independent press in the Highlands, which was formed in 2002, but it has already garnered a really formidable reputation. You have two, um, you have, well, you are Saltai Publisher of the Year in 1914. You've also been shortlisted for a huge number of awards, including, of course, the Man Booker Prize with Jane Rogers' Testament of Jesse Lamb yeah. in 2011 and Eve Harris's The Marriage of Charney Kaufman in 2013. Now, can I get you, Maura, to talk a little bit about the history of sandstone and how you were formed? We started in 2002 and the press was founded by Robert Davidson who's managing director um, but we began before that publishing an arts magazine called Northwards and after that uh, moved on to publishing poetry pamphlets very briefly and I think must be one of the few publishers to make a profit on poetry pamphlets uh, and then very quickly moved into publishing uh, for adult learners. So the Vista series of books was commissioned from Scottish writers and the aim was to provide a short novel for adults who've come late to reading and would struggle to read a full-time novel. Okay. Uh, we had support for that from Highland Adult Literacies um, and really good support to get the, that series going and it was very successful. So we published three a year for four years and, uh, and some of them are still in fact selling they sold very well indeed. Um, they were rather overtaken when Penguin Random House brought out the Quick Creeds, which were a similar sort of thing, but Penguin Random House could do it much more cheaply. So we had, unfortunately, to not we weren't able to carry on really with the Vistas in any kind of commercial way. But we were beginning to move into non-fiction. And for several years it was non-fiction that we published. Mainly books about the outdoors, uh, hill walking, climbing, uh, the environment, um, that kind of thing. And then in 2010, we moved into fiction. And that we did rather cautiously because fiction is a huge and very overcrowded market. Um, but in 2011, as you said, Jane Rogers' novel um, was, was, was long listed for the Man Booker Award. And um, that was a novel that had been turned down by her main publisher um, because they didn't see it as suitable for them and they saw it as young adult, where we saw it as an adult novel. So we were delighted to be able to publish it. The Booker long listing, certainly it made a difference to Jane, of course, but it made a difference to us as publishers, and we suddenly seemed to move up a level mm -hmm. at that time. Um, and in publishing, you learn something new every single day. You never know it all. And we certainly didn't know it all. We didn't know very much yeah. to start with, but we were learning very fast and becoming more professional as time went on. And the Vista series had taught us a great deal, it taught me a lot about editing and it taught us about print production and also distribution. And distribution is absolutely vital, having the right distribution of your books. So from then um, we carried on extending the list. So we started off by publishing really just a very few books a year and we now publish just over 30. Um, four of those are Gaelic medium and that's for the education market in Gaelic, and we have support from the Gaelic Books Council for those books, for those titles. Um, and the rest are divided roughly into half fiction, half non-fiction. Having said that, the number of submissions we receive for fiction far, far outstrips yeah. non-fiction submissions. It's very difficult to find good non-fiction. We are sent some non-fiction that's not suitable for our lists, but it, we have sometimes have to seek out Okay, so you commission writers to do the non-fiction? We have in the past done that. Things are coming to us much more steadily now, but okay. in the past we've done that, yes. One of our longest-selling, best-selling books is Cairngorm John, which is a history of mountain rescue. Uh -huh. And we worked with John Allen, who was the leader of the mountain rescue team in Cairngorm, to produce that book. It's a history of mountain rescue, but it's a history of that team and how that team was formed and how they became very professional, and it contains many, many stories of mountain rescue, which I think people far beyond the climbing community find of, of great interest. 
So that book has, there is not a week goes past that that book doesn't go out from the distributor and doesn't sell. Okay. So that's a that's good you, number of one years. One of your later. success stories. A yeah. huge success, Story. yes. And some of our early books do continue to sell in that way. So the outdoor books a book called Isles at the Edge of the Sea which is Johnny Muir's story of how he went round all the Scottish islands swimming from one to another or climbing a hill on an island and so on a very entertaining and unassuming book and that continues to sell Mm. really well but when you start you don't know which are going to be the big sellers Yeah, and that's always the difficulty in publishing that's the difficulty, that's the big risk that you take Um, you get a wee bit better at, at estimating but Maybe not a lot better. Yeah. Um, so that's those are our beginnings. Um, our fiction is broadly um, uh, literary or crime fiction. And our non-fiction, still we do a lot of outdoor stuff, but we also publish um, literary biography um, and some literature. And the latest literary biography we published is a bi- first biography of Josephine T, the yes. crime writer. And that's Josephine T, A Life, which is just coming out this month. Um, so we look to extend the non-fiction, but it would be along those lines. Okay, okay. Do you see, I mean, you have such a varied list at the moment. Yes. I looked at your website quite recently and saw that you have such a varied list of both fiction as well mm. as non-fiction. Do you, first of all, do you still publish poetry, a little bit of that? No. You don't? No, You've t- no. And um, could I just ask you why particularly? Poetry requires a huge amount of subsidy. It right. simply doesn't sell. Okay. It sells in very small numbers. Um, there are successful poetry publishers, Faber, obviously, really? yeah. um, and uh, Carcanet, Blood Axe, and so on, very, very good right. publishers of poetry. But unless you have some very big names, Ted Hughes, Caroline Duffy, you, know, you are not going to make yeah. a great deal of profit in poetry. It's very specialised, and we felt that when we began, the only way we could carve a niche, if you like, for ourselves as a publisher was first of all to publish non-fiction that we could shape in the way that we wanted it. And uh, Robert Davidson and I are both authors, so we brought a lot of our authorial and editorial skills to the non-fiction to begin with, working with people who were not authors, but who had a wonderful story to tell. so you could sell Cairngorm Mountain Rescue as a concept to a reader, Surely. whereas we couldn't have sold John Allen's name right. because nobody knew right. who he was in, in, the, in the sort of publishing world. Um, when it comes to fiction, when we put our toe in the water there, we were conscious that we were most likely to get submissions from debut authors rather right. than experienced authors who already had publishers. Now, that wasn't always the case, and, and Jane Rogers came to us through her agent um, because a larger publisher had decided right. not to publish it. Sure. And in some ways, as a very small publisher, I think we've benefited from the very large publishers um, stopping really publishing good writers who are not selling in many millions. Okay. And larger publishers are looking for a very commercial fiction. They're mm-hmm. looking for something that they know will sell in the 40, 50,000, hundreds of thousands. Sure. Yeah. And we can't get those big names we're not going to Um, certainly as we begin as a new publisher we weren't going to get those names so you have to be realistic about that and look at what you can do as a publisher and how you can perhaps help to shape and make new authors right so with fiction that's why we began and remained open and still remain open to direct submissions from authors right we've had some absolutely wonderful material coming direct from authors that's really nice to hear and it's very exciting yeah. when that happens. So let me backtrack a little bit because mm-hmm. I was quite intrigued by the opposition you set up between independent publishing and the conglomerates, really. Um, you see as a, real, a really special role for independent publishers to nurture talent. Um, you'll publish debut authors in a way that it might be much more difficult to get into a larger house. Um, you bring special editorial skills to that. Mm-hmm. You nurture and mentor... Yeah. Right. So is that the distinctive aspect but of independent publishing? I wouldn't want to say that large publishers don't do any of those things because I'm sure some Surely. of them do and yeah. do them very well. But it is what we bring to it. And I think um, many authors like being published by a smaller independent publisher because they get more attention. And I think that is inevitable. If you are Penguin Random House or HarperCollins, you have a 
huge lists of authors of books and authors are just one of very many um, whereas with us they're one of a small number and we therefore try to work as hard as possible to make them and their book a success okay. um, so I think there's maybe something of that about it um, and certainly we do do a lot of editorial work and I know that some larger publishers don't do nearly as much of that Right, and all the industry. editorial works in in house yes. for your publisher. Yeah, yes, it is. some some big companies outsource. Yes, and and uh, there are at times of pressure. We have been sorely tempted, um, and I think we have someone who works. Uh, she works freelance, but we don't routinely put um, books out to be edited elsewhere. And it does it does mean that because there's only Robert and myself who edit. Um, that puts a lot of pressure on us, and that's a huge workload. Yeah. So we'll come to this obviously in a bit, but we will we yeah. will be employing another editor probably within the right. next year. But it can be also much more personal because of that. Yes, yes, yeah. it is. There's yeah. no question. Yes. Yeah. And you form very close <laughs> relationships with authors when you work with them over a long period of time. Okay. Yeah. Now, something that struck me in that conversation, I have a little prepared list of questions, but something that struck me in that conversation, which wasn't on my original list, was this whole idea. You talked about um, um, the niche markets for your Scottish writing, which was to do with travel, the environment. Yes, um, with, with the outdoors. And with the outdoors, yes. and outdoors was yeah. the term you used. Yeah. Um, is it very different um, selling that kind of um, selling to the niche markets that mm -hmm. speak to those kinds of genres as opposed to fiction. Do you do things differently there? That was just something um, that struck me from... Well, I would say that publicity and marketing is all about targeting Shelley. the right markets for your books. So yeah. sometimes you're trying to attract a wider market than perhaps the yes. subject of the book yeah. might might which, comes with, which kind of carries me to that really big question, which I was going to save up to the end. But it's a question about yeah. kind of um, being in Dingwall, being in Scotland yes. particularly, yeah. catering to it's a local market or a regional or a national market, which is Scottish, mm -hmm. and then that international. That, that, yes. is there, are there tensions? Are there kind of rewards? How tricky is it to mm -hmm. do both? Well, the first thing to say is that we're based in the Highlands of Scotland, but we look out to the rest of the world sure. and we've always taken that attitude now 20 or 30 years ago we could not have done that sure. but electronic communication the use of Skype the use of uh, you know, using phone calls emails and so on um, the way that we work with authors now is possible now and it means that can be, we can be based anywhere sure. and that has not been a limitation I think it might have been to begin with. We don't find it so now. Sure. And in fact, in some ways, it's a strength because it gives us a, a uniqueness, if you like. Yeah. And, you know, people remember us because we're the ones that we up there in the north of Scotland, <laughs> in the wilds. Yes. And of course, we do yeah. come out of there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, you do the London book fairs and all the Frankfurt yeah, and all yeah. the other we ones. We do leave at, at, yes. at points. And we're in Edinburgh and Glasgow a lot for meetings. We're in London several times a year. Yeah. And we, we go to Frankfurt, obviously, as well. So... It is possible to be there. Now, in terms of our market and who we're appealing to, we are never, ever considering that this book is really only for the Scottish market. Some books may okay. be primarily for, for the, the Scottish, Scottish market. market. Scottish readership, it does have wider appeal. Yes. With other books, there is no question of there being only Scottish. Far from it. You know, they really are. Yes. They really do appeal much more widely than that. So the battle for us, in a sense, over the years, has been to have adequate sales representation right. across the UK and beyond the UK. And that's the bit that small independent publishers often find very difficult. Yes, that's tricky, but of course with the web and with internet connections. OK, can I also um, ask you now um, to maybe kind of describe for us the whole process of bringing a book out from accepting it... Um, in manuscript form, right. whether it comes through an agent, we should do presume yes. some of them yes. come through an agent, yes, um, some of them come just in the post. Yep. Um, take us through that whole process. Okay. okay, but let's look at a nice straightforward B format paperback okay. novel. Mm -hmm. um, and then we don't have to kind of go down the byways at the moment of design and uh, you know uh, internal design of a book, photographs and maps and all the rest of it, because Shelley. that complicates and slows uh -huh. down the okay. whole kind of production okay. process. But if we look at, for example, um, someone sends us their novel 
Um, first of all, we don't read all the submissions that come to us. That's you don't. not possible. Okay. What I do. How many is submissions do you get, first of all? Ah, well, of novels. <laughs> Loads. Probably about 300 a year. Right. I haven't okay. counted them all up recently, yeah. but I'm getting them daily. Okay. There's very rarely a day goes past that there's not Very a submission. Nice. And I know that some publishers get a lot more. Um, we have um, a, a section on the website, the, the contact submission which, contact page, which explains how to submit to okay. us. And I would expect authors to look at that first and therefore okay. to comply with what we ask them to do when they send us something, and most do. Um, agents, of course... You know, will send us novels as well and they will give us a little bit about the author and so on and sure. um, the background of the author and tell us about the book and send us the full book. But when I'm asking an author to submit, I usually just ask for the opening chapter okay. and a synopsis. Okay. And I want to know first, can they write a synopsis? Are they any good right. at that? Yeah. And uh, I guess that tells you a lot about whether they can write. And then I will look at the submission form and I'll look at what they've done before, whether they've published anything, whether they've yeah. written anything before. Yeah. Um, and then I will look at the opening chapter that they've sent me. Okay. If it's well written, if it engages me, then I will consider the synopsis and I may then send, ask for the full text and send that to one of our readers. We have a number of people who read for us. Um, they're not academics, um, okay. although I do have some students read for me uh, from time to time, uh, publishing students. Um, the aim is for them to read the text and tell me whether they think it works, yeah. whether they think it's good, uh, it, it, they've enjoyed it, it um, holds together well, what its strengths are and what weaknesses it might have, whether it needs a bit of work or whether it just yeah. simply isn't good enough okay. um, as it stands. And I have to trust my readers because right. I can't read everything. Right. Occasionally, I will have sent out a text to a reader and then I'll be going on a train journey, so I'll have downloaded it to my Kindle and I'll have a look at it. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes by the time I get to the end of it, I think, yes, we're going to take this, I don't care what the reader says. <laughs> right. okay. um, but that doesn't okay. happen very often because okay. I don't have time. Okay. But if it attracts me, I might do that. Yeah. Um, or sometimes I'll get through it and I'll write to the reader and say, you can leave this one, I think, okay. we're, we're not going to take it. Um, but if it comes back from the reader with a very positive endorsement, then one of us will read it. Um, that's to say, Robert Davidson or me. One of us okay. will read that. And we then take it to an acquisitions meeting. And we will have okay. acquisitions meetings from time to time, fairly informally. And we then discuss the books that we're bringing to the acquisitions meeting. So once we've accepted something, I will write to the author to let them know. And I will tell them that a formal offer will follow. Um, and Robert then does the formal offer. And Ian Gordon, our company secretary and the third yes. director of Sandstone, who deals with all the financial side of things, um, he will uh, send out the formal contract. Sure. Um, so if it's an agent who has submitted, then the contract goes to the, the agent agents. and we make the offer to the sure. agent. And the agent then speaks to the author. So there's sometimes a bit of toing and froing before that's decided, but that, that's how it happens. Once we've accepted a book, I will warn the author, particularly debut authors, that there can be a long period where nothing much happens right. because we have to deal with each book in turn. And if we're not publishing it until January 2017, I'm not it going to start sure, work on yeah. it now. We, we will be leaving it for quite a bit. So I've made some suggestions as to how he might work on the novel. Yes. And I've said those two and we've discussed it on the phone and he's gone away and in fact he's just sent me his revised novel. Right. And I printed some out so that I can start reading it on the train going home. Um, now, that reading, I'll be marking up the text as I go, if sure. there's anything I think yeah. needs adjustment. Yeah. Um, and he'll, he might have to do a bit of further work, or he might not. Yes. That might be it. Um, the next stage, when the author and I both have a text we're happy with, mm. we feel it's complete, is that it will go to a proofreader. And we use external proofreaders. Yeah. Because however often you read something, yeah. you, you will miss. miss. <laughs> yes, I do know that. You will know that, yeah. <laughs> and so it needs another eye on it. Um, most books do not go for a full copy edit because they've been edited fairly thoroughly. Um, this is in-house or no, through agents? through uh, any book really. But through um, we, 
how ex we work with external copy editors. Okay, so you yeah. have a copy editor to work with a book. Yeah, not always. Sometimes okay. all that's needed is a proofread. Yeah. So that is yeah. just simply checking for errors and inconsistencies and making very small suggestions for changes to the sure. author. Yeah. If it's a full copy edit, then that is a much more thorough um, check of the facts yeah. and so on. Um, but when it's been proofread and the author has checked the proofing yes. of it, um, then we go to typesetting. Okay. Um, and at that stage, a development file has been created, which shows you the copyright page. It's still a Word file, but it's got the copyright page at the beginning, dedication, acknowledgements, anything else. Um, and that goes to the typesetter once it's been proofed. And the typesetter will lay it out, and then it's a PDF, and it looks like a book. That's really okay. exciting for the author yes, to see. Yes, because, I can oh, imagine. It looks like a real book now. <laughs> Suddenly um, it's real. Yeah, that's right. Um, the PDF first proof goes back to the author. It's their responsibility to do a final check. We don't make any big changes at that stage. Okay. It's just proofing errors, right. tiny, tiny things that get amended. And the author will then send me back any errors they've found, and a second proof appears. And the typesetter will do it again, sure. and then we make sure it's as right as it can be. And you would be amazed how many errors will creep through, yeah. however yeah. many checks you've done. So um, it then is ready to go to print. In the meantime, you've got the cover. Now, we have to spool back a bit, because yeah. when we agree to publish a book, we commission the cover fairly soon. To you. Yes. Very quickly after you Quite written. soon. Because when we are selling books, we have to present our six months of books to the sales team. Surely. So in September, we've been going down to London to present the January to June books for the following year. I've just right. done that this last September. So if you're going to present the sales team with all the books you're going to publish January to June next year, they all have to have covers. Yeah. And is this the favour of Factory Plus? Yes. The sales team there yes, the sales who team represent there. you? Yes. Yeah. And the, 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 it's necessary for you to have what's called an AI sheet, which is the advanced information sure. sheet about yeah. the book with yeah. blurb, biography of the author sure. and so on. Any other relevant information and photograph of the cover, photograph of the author. Right. Um, and the cover needs to be commissioned. And all the designers we work with are, are, free, are freelance, they're external. Um, the large publishing houses will have their own in-house art departments yes. and produce their yes. own covers. But we commission a range of, of designers. And we'll often spend a bit of time discussing which designer is the best mm. one for yeah. a particular book. Yeah. Do the authors have any say on that? Is there they don't a select the designer. <laughs> we select the designer. <laughs> yes. But we, we, I ask them, I prepare a brief for the designer, okay. which is quite a detailed description of the book, and we like to position it with other books. The designer will say, well, who are the other? Sure. What other books are like this? Yeah. That's what they yeah. want to know. So, for example, you're publishing a thriller. Yes. Yeah, it has to look a certain it way. It will have to look a certain way. It does, yes. uh, and this seems terribly superficial, but we've learned the hard way over the years that a book must look like its contents. Yes. It has yes. to reflect the kind of book it is, yes. and uh, the trade are very keen on this, and it's the book trade you have to please, and Surely. the yeah. readers, yeah. because the book trade are going to put it out there. So um, we will have draft covers come through to us from the designer. We always run them past the sales team, because they're working with the trade day in, day out, and they know what the trade will like. Yeah. Uh, it, what the cover must do is sell the book. Yeah. It must make someone pick it up from the pile in Waterstones, take it off the shelf, sure. yeah. look at the little thumbnail on Amazon and say, oh, that looks good. Yeah. So that's the, oh, that's yeah. the reader's first yeah. sight of the book. Yeah. It has to be a strong cover. So we work yeah. really hard, hard on those. Yeah. Um, and if everybody's happy, well, that's the cover. We've got to the covers, and now the book is ready to go to press. What happens after that? Just a right. quick story, well, and I'll backtrack a little bit. At, at some point earlier on, though, we will have looked for an endorsement for the cover, which is a line by a famous author. This okay, is so you go to someone book. else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know how yeah. that goes. Um, so we discuss that with the author and their agent, and we use our own contacts and we try to find an appropriate person to provide an endorsement yeah. for the novel. So that happens around the time that we've got a complete text yes. you know, that, that is ready, ready for typesetting. 
um, and sometimes we'll send that just as a PDF to the other author who's endorsing it, and sometimes we'll send a bound copy. Uh, that's to say, a the word bound document bound, bound, bring yes. bound, or yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, but when we're ready to go and we have the cover complete, um, because you have to think about the back cover as well as the front cover, so yes, once you've course, yeah, got yeah. the cover design, you need the full spread cover, the author needs to see that as well and do a proof yeah. check on that. Um, and then that goes, those files for the cover and the book will go to the printer. Now, print is a whole other kind of section of publishing. I don't deal with it myself at all. Robert yeah. deals with all that side of it, uh, along with Sue Foote, who's our administrator. Um, but he will get quotes for publishing. And for a long time, Sandstone's been publishing in Poland. Right. We have an agent, a print agent, who works for us in Poland. She will get the best Polish printer for yeah. our books. And we've had very good prices there. It's worked very well. However, it is a longer turnaround time, yes. so it's maybe three weeks rather than mm -hmm. five or six days, which you can get in the UK with UK printers. Um, and that's been all right up to now. It's worked reasonably well for us, and certainly it's been very cost effective. But you can't stand still with that. OK, let me backtrack a little bit and ask actually the, the silliest of questions to you. What catches your eye when you're sifting to this pile? Right. I mean, what mm. do you look for? If you, particularly with fiction, because our writers yes. here are um, mostly um, yeah. fiction and poetry writers, yeah. and lesser non-fiction. It, it's a very it's a cop out of an answer to say good writing. <laughs> I it thought is. you were going to say that, <laughs> but but there must be something. First of all, I must be interested in the story. I do not want a yet another novel about someone finding themselves. Okay, you know, because okay might be brilliant but not everybody is you know is jd salinger not everybody sure. is yeah. you know is going to be able to provide that buildings roman that, that you know that coming of each novel mm -hmm. that actually works and novels about uh, middle-aged people going off to a remote scottish <laughs> island to find themselves and renew their lives and so on they come in on a very regular basis and they might be for somebody else but i don't think they're for us yeah. I want something that has some meat in it. I want to know, what is this novel about? And I want, in, in the submission form, I ask authors to say in about 50 words what their novel is about. Yeah. If you can't do that, then you don't really know yourself. Yes. And so I want to see that there is some meat there. I have to say that if something has wit or humour, I'm drawn to it immediately. Okay. Because that's hard to do. Yes, it is. And now we have to consider... What is the author's profile? You know, how are we going to publicise and sell this book? Sure. And I've had one or two novels I've really loved, and we haven't taken them because I couldn't see how on earth we were going to get them noticed. Okay. And that's really sad. Okay. Um, but it's it's funny, isn't it? Because you think of writing just good writing, but it but publishing is a business as well. It is an yes. in, interface between, if you like, that aesthetics but also the it, business end. It is a business, and there is no author, really, when it comes to it, who wants their novel to come out and nobody read it. Yes. You, we're yeah. not doing an author any service at all yeah. if we cannot promote and sell that book Surely. and yeah. get yeah. people interested in it. And it's not just a question of getting reviews. It's very hard yeah. to get reviews yeah. now. There are fewer, especially in Scotland, there are very few places yeah. where you can get a book. We review. <laughs> I'm, we glad, I'm very glad of it because it's getting harder. It is getting harder. And we want yeah. good reviews. We want people like you to be reviewing books and noticing them. It's more about getting what they call off-the-page notice, off-the-literary yes. pages notice, so articles about the author. Yes, and we've just published a, a novel called True Story it's a very good novel quite funny, uh, enlightening uh, and a wee bit unusual and the author, it's about a, a, a couple on a very remote farm and their son is autistic oh, he's 12 this is years Catherine old Catherine Simpson, Simpson. Simpson. Yes, and she yes. was here at the Literary was Festival she? so you yes. know Catherine, yes well Catherine herself, as I'm sure she said has a daughter who has Asperger's um, and has grown up now and very successful in her life um, but Catherine knows all that background she understood it really well she's also a journalist and I think her husband's a journalist and so she had a lot of publicity that wasn't on the literary pages but oh, was about okay. her situation yeah. but it also yeah, told yeah. you about the book so you can't not do the publicity and marketing 
you never quite know which no, of it is yes. going to work and how much of it you're going to get. Surely, yeah. But we spend a lot of money oh, on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have to draw this to a close because I'm aware that actually we're going to press you to do that talk quite soon. But can I just ask one thing which struck me? I had a whole series of questions I was going to ask you. I'll ask you when um, when you do your talk. Mm. But one thing that two things that struck me. One is again to return to that little kind of motif about independent publishing mm-hmm. in a crowded marketplace. Yeah. Is there a sense in, and, and you then also say how writers might be poached from the smaller publishers as their careers take off. Is that generally true or is that that mentoring process or that personal relationships that you that you create with, pub, with your yeah. authors would in some ways, you know, tempt them to just stay with you? Well... Well, it was a bit of both, I suppose. It was a bit of both. And that was the first time we'd had a formal approach about right. an author. Now, it is specific to crime, I think. Okay, because it's big business crime. Crime is big business. Yes. Crime sells huge big numbers. Business. And the public and the trade like crime in series. Yes. You know, so the same, you know, Inspector Rebus goes all the way sure, through, yeah. you know. And Mark had his uh, sea detective, his yes. oceanographer. Who's his yes. hero, Cal McGill. Okay. Naturally, if you have an author who wins the Man Booker, or you know, the, then the you're going to get a lot of approaches. approaches. Yeah. We certainly are. We had approaches um, for uh, Jane, Jane Rogers', Rogers novel, yes, and it, yeah. we we sold that to Canongate. Gate. Yes. Um, when it came to the marrying of Honey Kaufman, we were well able to deal with it ourselves. Yes. We'd you know, grown as a publisher considerably in interim, mm-hmm. um, and so that continues to sell. That's another book that we've just ordered another print run of because it keeps selling. selling. Oh, yeah. good. Okay, Sorry. let me just draw this to close and it's a real shame because I've, I actually would love, love to ask you all these other questions that I had thought of and the conversation's been really quite interesting. It's been a real eye-opener to thinking about publishing. Thank you yeah. very much, Moira, <laughs> and I look forward to hearing your talk in about 20 minutes. We hear a lot <laughs> of the same things again. <laughs>